This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. The second part of the chapter, followed on from your agriculture, is now looking at inventory. And inventory is a massive bit of revision, isn't it, from the days of F3 and F7. So I say there isn't anything too new, but we are just going to throw one slight little curveball in there as we go along. So I think you're very happy, or at least you should be, with how you value inventory at the lower of your cost and net realisable value. So remember, your cost is your purchase price plus your directly attributable costs of getting the asset into its condition and location ready for sale. So that's going to go through there and include your materials, your labour and your manufacturing overheads. But remember, on the days of F7, that's based upon your normal output. Any variances will be subsequently dealt with. Yeah, we value it based upon cost, based upon your standard costing and your normal output. So what you expected to produce. If you had higher or lower production levels, then we don't make any adjustment to the manufacturing overhead cost per unit. The other situation then is looking at your NRV. Uh, remember, we know that our NRV is our selling price, less cost to sell, less our cost to complete. Uh, just be careful here, however, now is that when we're looking at our selling price, remember the selling price is the selling price that we have of the finished goods. So if you're trying to go through there and value your inventory and it's consisting of maybe raw materials or some work in progress, when you're looking at the NRV, you have to take the selling price of the finished goods and deduct selling costs and deduct costs to complete. OK, uh, you don't look at the selling price of the raw materials or the selling price of the work in progress to which it could currently be sold for. And I think that may be ever so slightly new. You may be being aware of it, but let's just bring it to the forefront of our attention. So when you're looking at the NRV and you're valuing the inventory at the lower of cost and NRV on a line by line basis, remember, you look at the NRV based upon the selling price of the finished goods. OK. Uh, and I emphasize that because if we go through there and have a look at the other example, that we have there within the chapter that is emphasizing the point that we have there in hand because it wants us to go through and work out the value of your closing inventory to be included in bravo's financial statements and what you've got there is bravo is a manufacturer it manufactures components for the retail industry so if it's manufacturing it's likely to have raw materials work in progress and finished goods so it goes through a process it has stages of production it says the inventory is currently valued at cost if we work out that the nrv is lower then we would need to have an inventory write down we're then told the cost structure of the equipment as follows and you can see there that this inventory is subject to a process you've got the production process then you convert what is produced into then a finished good and you can see there that you have the cost per unit uh, for the production process, the conversion costs on top, which then add to give you the cost of, if you like, that finished good. Just note you're given the selling price per unit. So when you're comparing the cost to the NRV, you're going through there and looking at the selling price of the finished product, the $1,700 per unit. You ignore the selling price per unit of that first production stage. Okay. Uh, and I think they valued the inventory correctly at cost because uh, the selling price is 1700 which is higher, isn't it, than the cost of the finished product. Uh, so they valued it at the lower of cost and NRV for the finished product. For the production process, uh, you've got a cost of 1000 And if you deduct the conversion cost of 500 from the 1700 you get 1200 So again, they've correctly valued it at the lower of cost and NRV, haven't we? Uh, however, what we then have to go through and consider now is the additional information, isn't it? And we're told that there are selling costs of £10 per unit. So we need to apply that selling cost of £10 per unit uh, to the selling price, which may now have gone through and changed. 
We're told there's 100,000 in the first day, 200,000 of finished product. So once we've got a value per unit, we can apply it therein. And it says there, shortly after the year end, so an adjusting event, a competitor released a new model. And this has resulted in Bravo having to reduce its selling price to 1450 for the finished product. Uh, so that's what we would help use to work out our NRV. Yes, it says 950 for the first stage of the production, but that is not relevant. When we look at our NRV, we go through there and work out the NRV based upon the NRV of the finished product. So what we can go through and do that is we need to work out the NRV. So your selling price. So our expected selling price is that now 1,450, isn't it? Uh, our expected selling costs, I think, were there as 10, weren't they? Which gives me 1440 as our NRV for the finished goods, isn't it? Okay. Versus, is it the 1500? Okay. So if that's the case, what we need to go through and do there is we need to value the inventory at the lower. The lower is there at the 1440, isn't it? So you have to reduce the inventory by, is it $60 per unit? Uh, $60 per unit based upon... Is it the, the number of goods that we have as finished goods? And it says there, is it 200,000 units uh, of finished goods? Okay. So what we've got there is $60 per unit multiplied by, is it the 200,000 units? Uh, does that go through there and give me a reduction of $12 million, okay, which is your adjusting figure. You need to reduce the inventory by the $12 million because it is already included, isn't it, at cost, okay. Uh, we then need to go through and work out the NRV, don't we, for the first stage of production. So just be careful there. We've got the same calculations. We've got the selling price. Is it at one four four zero? We have the selling costs of ten. We have the conversion costs, so the costs to complete, which I think were the as five hundred. So does that go through there and give me, is it 930? Careful, thought that looked wrong. That should be 1450, shouldn't it? Okay, I have the memory stored or the answer stored in my memory. And when I got 930 on my calculator there, I anticipated I'd done something wrong. You probably already spotted that. So if you had very well done indeed. So what you have there now is that is the NRV, isn't it, of the first stage of the production process versus a cost, which was there of 1,000. So they've got it recorded at 1,000. The lower of the two is the 940. So again, that is a reduction by, is it $60 per unit? I think we have, is it 100,000 units in the first stage, isn't it? So I think that is a reduction, is it, of $6 million. That's the adjustment that I would need to process to get the goods from their cost of a thousand for the hundred thousand units down to a hundred thousand units at nine forty. There we have it. That, that's inventory value and getting the lower of cost and NRV. And I think the key bit that you need to take going forward here 
is that what you've got there is when you're working out the NRV, you need to look at the NRV based upon the selling price of the finished goods. And that's particularly important when we're looking at a production process that goes through stages, raw materials, work in progress, finished goods. Other than that, I really don't think it will get any more complicated than that if it was to appear within the exam. If it was to appear within the exam, where would it appear? I'd have thought that given that is a numerical style question, that's more likely to appear in question one as part of your group accounts question. And that that adjustment there will be required in the parents books. So when you're making the adjustments there, is it for the 12 million and is it there for the 6 million? You need to reduce the inventory within the group accounts on a line by line basis. So in the inventory line, you would deduct 12 and 6. And then you need to process the other side of the entry, which would be a reduction in the parents retained earnings, which would be there, wouldn't it, in working five. There you go. Inventory, revised and complete. I'll see you all in the next chapter.